All right, leak code number 20, grind 75 number two, called the valid parentheses. So you're given a string and all it contains are either these symbols that are given to you here and you just have to determine if it's valid. And how you do that is you check if an open bracket is closed by the same type of bracket and open brackets have to be closed in the correct order. So like always, before doing anything, let's just draw out the problem. Take out our favorite tool, MS Paint. Put on that juicy calligraphy pen. And let's copy one of the examples. Uh, let's do the more complex example, because I think the oversimplistic example can be deceiving a little bit. So we're given this input. It's like this. Oh, I hate drawing. How do you draw these? There we go. Hopefully these look okay. Okay, now we know the output for this is supposed to be true. Okay, so we have this. Now what do we do? If you looked by example one, you might just think, oh, well, if I see an open, right, if I see like an open bracket, I could just scan ahead linearly till I find a corresponding close bracket. And if I do that for each one, eventually that'll work out. The problem with that is that it's not gonna work out because you could be given like nested things. You can you can have brackets nested in one each other. So like you can have like S equals uh let's say it's like this and this and this and like this. And it could keep going and going and going. And whenever you have something that involves nesting, like something like this, or analyzing a mathematical expression. The thing, the first thing that should come to your mind to try out is to use a stack. And ideally, in this problem, it actually ends up being the optimal solution. So we'll just jump right into it. So let's say we have a stack. Boom. And we'll call it stack S because we're very original, although in the problem, the strings S, so we'll have to call the ST. And we're going to have a pointer to, let's say, the beginning of our little string. And whenever we see an open parenthesis, we say, oh, cool, we found an opening. Let's store it for later in case we ever have to check, in case we ever encounter a closing parenthesis. So we push this onto the top of the stack and we move on. So we take this and we put it here and we say, oh, look, we found a closing parenthesis. Does the top of my stack, does it have a corresponding opening parenthesis to this one? And it, we do. So what we do is we pop and we move on. We say, hey, look, there's an open square bracket. What do I do? I put it at the very top of the stack and it's here. Then I move my pointer. I move it here. I say, hey, look, I found a closing square bracket. I wonder. Is the last thing that I encountered, was that a closing square bracket? And you'll, you check the top of your stack and you're like, of course it is. Pop that. I go here and I say, I have an open, opening uh, bracket, squiggly bracket. And I put that on top of my stack because it was an opening one. And I move along. And you probably know how this goes by now. You see a closing, you check the top of your stack, and look, it corresponds to an opening. We pop. And then eventually we're done with our little for loop going through our string. And we have to check the stack. And we say, okay, well, if my stack's empty, that means that I just had a valid input. If it's not, if there's something left over, which I will show you right now, just so we can run through this one more time. Uh, it's not going to be valid. So let's do an example. Let's delete this. Uh, let's cross this out. So let's say our example now is going to be, uh, we'll do something like this, uh, followed by this, 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 but then I have this, this, and this, right? So these two are opening, this one's a closing, this is obviously not valid. 
So let's do our little check. Let's make our pointer. It's gonna point to the first one here. And so we, we encounter an opening. We push it on the stack. We encountered another opening. So we, of course, like we know, push it on the stack. We encountered a closing bracket. And so we say, okay, well, I see a closing square bracket. Does the top of my stack have an opening square bracket? It does, cool. Let's just pop and move on. I go here, I see a closing parenthesis, and I say, oh, does the top of my stack have an opening parenthesis? It does, cool. Let's pop. I go here, and I see an opening squiggly bracket. And I push it on top of my stack. I see yet another opening squiggly bracket. I push that on top of my stack. I see a closing squiggly bracket and I say, awesome, do I have on top of my stack an uh, opening squiggly bracket to match this one? And I do actually. So I cross that out. But as you see, I'm done with this for loop. And at the end, I do my check. What's the size of my stack? Well, it's one. One means there's one thing in there and it's not empty. So we return false. So how about we code this up? Let's see how it looks. Um, we will come back to this though, because I do want to show you guys a little caveat to the code that I usually write. So we're going to make a stack. The stack's going to have some characters. We'll call it ST because we're original. We'll do four auto C and S. So we're basically looping through the string for those of you who don't know. And we're going to say if C is equal to what are our openings? Uh, this is an opening, or C is equal to uh, squiggly is an opening. And then I believe, yeah, C is gonna equal to the square bracket opening. And there it is, awesome. If that's a thing, we're just gonna do st.push C, the, char uh, the character. So you push that, else, if um, C ends up equaling, like let's say it's a closing parenthesis. Oh no, what am I doing? Okay, there we go. Closing parenthesis. Uh, and the top of the stack doesn't, and the top of the stack has what we need. But in C++, I should do this first. I should say if not st dot empty like i should check if the stack's empty because if the stack's not empty or the, if the stack is empty and i try popping from it i'm gonna get an error right so i first check if it's not empty just in case and i do if st dot top so the top of the stack if that equals to a corresponding open opening parenthesis i'm pretty much good right so all i have to do is i just do st dot pop and we're good and we can just copy and paste the rest of this and we'll just fix it up so if we have a closing squiggly and the top is a corresponding opening squiggly we pop if it's a corresponding opening no sorry if the corresponding square closing bracket and the top is an opening so we do this we also pop else now this is the part of code that i do want to explain because uh let's actually run it right now i want to show you why so we'll we'll just return s dot empty which will return a boolean so if you run the code it's actually wrong because i did something wrong <laughs> hold on what do we do wrong here uh doo -doo 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 -doo. we did something wrong something bad Um, so we have this. This pushes it on the stack. This checks if the top of the stack has this. Cool. It should have it. I should pop. This is why it's st.mt. There we go. Sorry. That's going to return true. And in fact, it should return true for all our examples, right? But when we submit it, it's actually going to be false. We're going to have wrong answer. And we see this input right here. So let's see what actually happens with that input back in paint. 
So let's erase this. And we'll have our input just be a lonely little closing bracket. And I'll clean up my stack. Delete. Awesome. OK. Um, so I see this. The rules of my code say I only push on the stack if I have an opening. But right now, I have a closing. So I don't push. I do nothing. I move forward. And when it's time to return if my stack S is empty, or ST in this case, I shouldn't trick myself, I'm going to return true, but that's not true. So to fix this, all I'm going to say is that, you know what? If none of these conditions are met, you know, else let's just do st.push c. Let's just do that. And if we run our code, the code will still work. And you know, this time, if we submit, it'll work four milliseconds faster than whatever, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't really matter. But there you go. Um, runtime complexity. Uh, so for runtime, this is an O of n solution. We're only looping through the string once. We're never going back to do anything else. And space. Space, since we're making the stack, we're doing it's going to be O of n. It's going to scale linearly with the amount of things we have in our string. So there's that. Pretty easy solution. Um, unlike the other solutions sometimes, it's kind of... I would say it's harder to actually come up with a brute force solution for this than to just come up with this. Um, I really think that this solution is just a lot easier to actually come up with on the spot. And uh, yeah, I think the only other thing I wanted to mention is I did see this problem on an actual interview. And one of the things that an interviewer can ask you that I was asked is like, well, what if I don't care about these things? Like, what if I don't care about open parentheses, close parentheses, open brackets, blah, blah, blah. Like, what if I have some weird, like, rules that define, like, a valid string to have, like, an opening A as an opening thing and nine as a closing thing corresponding to this? Like, what, like, what if this is, like, my valid opening closing thing? And the answer to that is I'm going to leave that as a challenge for you, but the hint I have is, like, Think of um, hash maps. Like think that you can just map, right? You can map an opening thing to its corresponding closing thing and think about that relationship. And uh, I was never actually even asked to code this, but it was a cool question. I thought I should like pass it on. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. I'm going to keep doing these from the grind 75 list. Uh, probably hopefully every day and I'm going to be recording myself just to get more comfortable with talking through my solutions. So hopefully this helps you. All right, cool. Thank you.